One thing I despise about being an adult is having to clean. So when I was told that there are robots that can help alleviate some of that pain, I just had to try them out. Honichun were nice enough to send out the Q6 to me for free for review, and this robot is the creme de la creme of robotic vacuum cleaners. But the real question is, does it suck? Hello everybody, my name is Robert, and this is Review Clean. Let's get price out of the way real quick, because it's pretty compelling. This thing sells for about £350, and compared to its competitors, I would say that's really good. Especially when looking at something like the Roomba i7 Plus, which comes in at a whopping £700. This one comes with many of the same features as that Roomba, for about half the price. It is worth noting that though this robot may look similar to many of the others on the market, I am purely talking about the Honiture in this case. There are many other brand names that do this style of robot, and you can check out separate reviews for those all over the internet. But here we are purely focusing on the Honiture Q6. Let's talk unboxing. So while I was unboxing this product, it became clear to me that Honiture wanted me to continue to use this product for a very long time. Because alongside the robot, and its charging dock slash bin, we did get a lot of accessories, including three disposal bins. These are very similar to what you would get for something like a Henry Hoover. It's just a bag that collects all of the dust when you're emptying it. You also get 10 disposable mop ends, which just attach to the normal mop. And we do, of course, get a filter for the robot as well. One thing that's worth mentioning here is I did find that many of the replacement parts are few and far between. You can't really find them online, not specific ones anyway. You may find it difficult to really get the most lifespan out of this robot just because of those accessories are harder to come by. But with what you get in the box, we do expect this to last three to four years just because of the sheer amount of accessories that you receive. And we'll talk a little bit about lifespan a little bit later in this review as well. Design is a funny one. Robot vacuums aren't particularly design heavy. They all look very, very similar. I liken it to a rather large ice hockey disc, but this one has a little ice hockey disc on the top of it. That is to house all of those LiDAR sensors, and it helps to map out the space and the room around it to give it a much better understanding of its environment. Other than that, it's very similar to every other robotic vacuum cleaner on the market. It has bumpers all around the outside, so if it does hit something, it knows about it and can avoid it. We also see a lot of cameras and other sensors. Along the top, there are only two buttons, the power button and the home button, and that's all you get. To actually control this thing, you'll be doing most of it through the mobile app, which we'll discuss a little bit later. On the bottom, we see a set of brushes. These two triangular ones help to just push everything into the middle. They will splay quite quickly and not look as clean as they did to start with, but that's just the design of them. We also get that main brush that sits underneath. A place for us to attach the mop attachment. And those big hefty wheels as well, and trust me, these are big wheels. What this means is it can traverse some of the slightly bigger steps. For example, it can step up and down off of a carpet with ease. The charging dock and bin are fairly well designed, though they are rather big. You can't really hide this in the corner of your room, it's a big black box. It also needs quite a lot of space around it in order for the robot to find it and actually dock itself. So you are going to have to keep in mind that you do need a lot of space. But I do think that is a small price to pay, especially for that auto-empty feature, which we'll discuss a little bit later. But for design overall, I give this a thumbs up. It looks pretty good and fairly modern. It just does take up a little bit more space than I might like, especially with that bin. Many robot vacuum cleaners on the cheaper side only use cameras and these bumpers to work out its environment. But more and more recently, we're seeing these robots with LiDAR sensors. LiDAR is basically laser scanning, and you can find it on the iPad Pro uh, and some of the iPhones, the 11s and the 12s. And what it does is it beams lasers out and bounces off of objects around it. What this means is it can see a much better detail of the room and the map around it. This is great for object avoidance and also when we're inside the app, 
we can set it to do only certain rooms because it already knows where each boundary for the room is because it's scanned all of this environment. It's really clever stuff and we'll discuss all of this later on when we get to the app. So let's actually talk about its ability to clean because for a robot vacuum cleaner, that's pretty important. Now I am testing this in a pretty tough environment. I have a bunny rabbit and he likes to make a mess in any way that he can. He throws litter, he throws food, he molts basically everywhere. So when I started this robot up, I was not expecting it to do an amazing job in the environment where we were seeing these larger bits of litter and rubbish. But the Honicher surprised me. There are three different settings, quiet, standard and max. On standard, I did find while it was moving around all of this litter, it really didn't pick up a lot of it and it left a lot of streak marks. We can see it in this video here. However, when turned up to the max, 2,700 PA of power meant that it literally managed to pick up almost all of the debris and rubbish that was in that room and left the floor and carpet looking almost immaculate. Under normal circumstances where in my office or in my living room where the bunny isn't, it did a much better job. It was quick, it was quiet, and quite honestly, it did a really good job. I was never really finding any bits of debris left behind, and everything looked nice and clean. Those carpets had those nice clean lines in them, which I always like to see. One thing I would mention though, is if you are using this in the environment with pets, especially in the hallway where my rabbit lives, I did find I was still having to hoover afterwards with my big stand-up hoover, just because some of that, those bigger bits of debris weren't being picked up by the robot. So under normal circumstances, this robot does an amazing job of cleaning. But in more tough environments, you will find that you have to use a stand-up hoover as well. Interestingly enough, this robot also has a mop attachment. This is becoming more and more popular again, but still quite rare to see. What this means is you can clip in the, the attached mop to the front of the hoover and tell it to either use the mop, the hoover, or both. And what's really clever is it understands where it is in space. So it understands when it's on wooden floor and it understands when it's on carpet and will avoid carpets if it's in a mopping mode. One downside here though, is it does only hold one litre of water at a time. So you will have find that you're having to constantly take out that piece, fill it up with water and plug it back in again. It won't last very long at all, but it doesn't leave a lot of mess or water. So I give it a thumbs up for that mopping feature. But the way that it's able to understand where it's on wood and when it's on carpet is excellent because there's nothing worse than a soggy carpet. Self-emptying, is something that's quite clever and stood out to me as a real feature here, but it fell short in my testing. Maybe it's because the pieces of debris I was getting it to pick up were simply getting jammed in the system, but once it's finished its cleaning cycle, it will actually back itself up into its dock and you'll hear a very, very loud sound. Trust me, this thing is scary noisy when it's sucking. But what it's meant to be able to do is remove all of the dust and debris from the robot, placing it into this bigger bin. But as noted, I found that it really didn't do a very good job here, mainly because of those bigger pieces of debris. If you're doing this in a normal environment where you've just got carpets and wooden flooring, it does a much better job at managing to empty itself. And it means that maintenance is much less than some of the cheaper robots on the market. This thing packs a 5,200 milliamp hour battery, which means that it can go for quite a time. On its quiet or standard setting, it can hoover for up to two hours, which is quite impressive. On its max setting though, I could literally watch the percentage drop over time. I could look at my phone one second and it would be at 99 and the next it would be at 97. It really did drop that significantly. One downside is it does not charge quickly. This thing takes 300 minutes to charge from zero to 100%. So you can't expect to be able to do more than realistically one or two hoovering sessions a day, just because of how long it takes to recharge. So if you have a bigger home, you might have to do this in smaller increments. For example, breaking it down into two rooms at a time or so on and so forth. 
but it's just something to keep in mind that that battery life, though good, recharge time is definitely not optimal here. This wouldn't be a smart home product without an app. And the app is really good. That's because it's based off of Toya Smart Life. Smart Life is the go-to for basically any smart home product. And it really does show. The app is super easy to use and really intuitive. Once you've connected the robot up, it will actually start to scan the environment by default and you'll start to see this understanding and map of your space. One downside is it can only hold one map at a time, which means that every time it goes around your house, it will remap the space. And I found this rather annoying, especially when it came to choosing rooms to Hoover, because each time I would have to remind it to load up the previous map and then tell it which room to load. We have a couple of buttons along the bottom to send it back to its charger, change its suction speed and start and stop. These are really useful for just really quick get up and go, but we can also see some of these buttons along the side to set it into different modes. For example, only choosing certain zones or actually drawing out a space for it to drive. That's really powerful and important when cleaning some of the more unique environments. In the settings tab though, this is where things get interesting. We're able to actually set timings for this to go off. This is very much like any other smart feature. You can, for example, set it to start cleaning at nine o'clock every morning and then mop from eight till 9 p.m. It is really versatile and really quick and easy to do. We can also connect this to smart assistants like Siri, Google or Amazon Alexa. And that's really cool because I can just bark my orders to clean a room and it will just go ahead and do it. There's also a maintenance mode here too, which will tell us the lifespan of each of the products that we've got. For example, those triangular brushes and the main brush, but also when that bin will need replacing. They say that it lasts up to 100 hours of actual use for each of the brushes. So that's pretty good, especially when in my testing, I've used this for half an hour a day. I think it will last a fairly long time. But as noted before, accessories are quite difficult to come by for this style of robot. If you can find them, then that's great. So overall, what do I think of this robot? Well, I think it's really clever. The smart home and automations that it allows are second to none. And that is because of that Toya Smart Life integration. And though I push this to some more challenging environments, it always seemed to come up trump, especially on carpet and with larger pieces of debris. Though I do wish that recharge time was slightly lower and that bin emptying feature was just that slight bit stronger. Anyway guys, what do you think of this robot? Is this something that you can see yourself using or do you think it's just a bit of a gimmick? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will of course catch you in the next one. Adios. If you made it this far, why not watch more review clue content by clicking one of the two videos on your screen right now. Go on. You know you want to. It's a really good video, the one on the left. But so is the one on the right. Which one are you going to choose? Let me know.